Hazing needs to stop. Like, this is not okay. That's the cry from students at BGSU tonight. Eight young men are charged in the hazing death of Stone Foltz. Six face felony involuntary manslaughter. His fraternity big brother accused of the most involvement. This has the community and the Foltz family continue to try to come to terms with the BGSU sophomore's death. Tonight we have team coverage as we learn about the charges against the accused fraternity brothers. Emma Henderson is digging deeper into the history of deadly hazing incidents, but we start tonight with Michael Tater. And Michael, you were there as the prosecutor read out those charges. You spoke with the family attorney. How are Stone's parents doing tonight after this huge announcement? Well, Jeff, their attorney tells me that every day is a hard day for them and their family. They feel like they were forced into this issue, just like they say Stone was. But they're grateful to the prosecutor's office tonight because they feel they're finally on their way to getting justice for their son. Shari and Corey Foltz stood hand in hand as the Wood County prosecutor outlined charges against eight young men allegedly involved in their son Stone's death. Family attorney Rex Elliott calling it a hard day, but a necessary one for the family. I think they have complete confidence that justice is going to be done here on the criminal side, and they believe that this is critically important to, uh, to stopping this kind of senseless conduct. There are many more people to identify as being at or involved. Prosecutor Paul Dobson would not go into specific detail of each person's alleged role in the hazing death. But he did identify 20-year-old Jacob Crin as Stone Foltz's big brother with Pi Kappa Alpha. Jacob Crin was more directly involved in the incident relative to Stone Foltz um, from the beginning to the end. He says Crin's actions directly contributed to Foltz's death, and that's why he faces the most serious charges. What happened here is not worthy of a misdemeanor. Um, that's why I think it's critically important that Colin Wyant's law get passed very quickly. The bill is named for Colin Wyant, the freshman at Ohio University, who died after collapsing on the floor of an off-campus fraternity house back in 2018. As hazing is now under a microscope across the nation, the Fultz family wants accountability. Maybe if we have severe enough consequences for this kind of stuff, it'll stop. When you have a slap on the wrist, there's no consequence, it just continues. While nothing will ever bring Stone back, his parents say they want his legacy to be that this never happens to anyone ever again. They do not want Stone to be left behind. And if we can dramatically reform this system right now and save lives, it'll accomplish what they're looking for. Now, the prosecutor says it's not his place to make a statement on the larger issue of hazing here in our country, but he hopes his office's actions serve as an example and provide justice and relief to the Foltz family. Jeff, Melissa. Michael, question here. Still a lot to come in this case. When do you think we'll find out more, like exactly what his a big brother in the fraternity and these other young men are exactly accused of doing to Stone Foltz? Well, Melissa, on the criminal side, all the defendants have summonses to appear in court on May 19th at 1 p.m., or they could be arrested. We won't know more about their actions in this case until it goes before a grand jury. Now, family attorney Rex Elliott tells me he expects BGSU to hand down student conduct violations very soon for all those who were involved in this case, which could lead to them being expelled. And the family is also planning civil action in the near future. Live in Bowling Green tonight, Michael Tater, WTOL 11. I had the chance to sit down with Stone's parents, Sherry and Corey Foltz, just two weeks after his death. They told me then that they felt that he didn't have a choice in this drinking ritual. Tonight, his parents spoke to CBS News, calling for their son's hazing death to be the last. Until we can, you know, put a stop to hazing and, and show that it's not okay, it's not acceptable, this is going to continue, and it's the parents' worst nightmare. It, it's it's got to stop. They are calling for all universities across the country to implement a zero tolerance policy when it comes to hazing. And it's something that students we spoke with on campus echoed tonight. Drinking that's a whole part of college, but letting people's lives no longer be here, like that's not acceptable. Among those indicted in Foltz's death is Troy Henriksen. He was a senior and one of two people facing third degree involuntary manslaughter and other charges. His attorney says Henriksen is not criminally responsible for Foltz's death.
the circumstances surrounding it are tragic. Um, there are, you know, obviously a number of people who are indicted, uh, as well as conduct across the board in the uh, Greek system and the fraternity system. Um, so as far as responsibility, again, I think that's a question that probably warrants a, a larger discussion beyond uh, criminal defense attorneys. The attorney also says Henriksen is not currently a student at BGSU. We did ask the university whether the students charged have been expelled. A spokesperson did not answer directly, but says the investigation into individual student conduct cases is ongoing and should be finished sometime this summer. There is a new bill in front of Ohio State lawmakers that would make hazing a felony. Currently here in Ohio, it's a misdemeanor. Senator Teresa Gavarone and Senator Stephanie Kunze, they have co-sponsored new legislation targeting hazing at colleges and universities. The bill is believed to have bipartisan support. Records of hazing deaths go back more than 100 years. Emma Henderson talked to an expert tonight about what they have in common and how often there are legal consequences. We've had a death every year, according to my statistics, from 1959 to 2019, none in 2020, which we can attribute to the pandemic. BGSU expelled Pi Kappa Alpha after Fultz's death in a fraternity ritual involving alcohol. Hank Neuer has spent decades researching the causes of hazing and the people killed. Hazing is all about wanting solidarity. It's uh, all about earning your way in. Neuer explains hazing usually involves dangerous traditions, often passed down from alumni to current members. In many of these deaths, alcohol is involved, and after the incident, instead of calling 911, the first call might be to a former member or even attorney. And he says in many cases, the organization has been cited in the past, but those incidents go unpunished. Newer finds those charged often only face minor consequences. Small increments of 30 days to three months would be far more common. Now, I don't expect th this case to have more than probably 30 days either. He can only think of one example where someone got a significantly longer sentence. The Florida A&M case, one student was sentenced to six years. Newer says he's seen sentences range when states have anti-hazing laws put in place. In Bowling Green, Emma Henderson, WTOL 11. Newer says he's seen universities turn things around following hazing deaths. He says transparency about hazing incidents and consequences for the people involved seem to make the biggest difference. This is a story we've been tracking since the very beginning. We'll keep you up to date with alerts to your phone and new developments with our WTOL 11 News app. Plus, you can watch our entire sit-down interview with the Foltz family. Jeff did that. That is on our YouTube page tonight.